When a volatile liquid evaporates into a closed space, it will continue to evaporate until the space becomes saturated. Let's think of an analogy. Imagine the elevator is our closed space and that people are our volatile liquid. People will continue filing into this space until it becomes saturated. Once the space is saturated, no more people will be able to fit in. In today's lab, we're going to be studying vapor pressure. To set up our test apparatus, let's do this. Take your burette. Make sure it's closed and fill it with water. Now that your burette is filled with water, you want to put your thumb over it and invert it into your beaker. Now, why won't the water fall out of the burette? Now, this answer might be a little complicated, but if you think about it, the water is putting pressure downwards, which is creating a negative pressure in here. Now, atmospheric pressure will work against that pressure to balance out, and that's why the water doesn't flow. It's very similar to the siphon effect. Have you ever used a siphon? That's how they work. Yeah, that was a rather mediocre explanation, but if you want more information about siphons and pressures, click here. Remember, we want to measure how far our water level drops. So, if you can't read the marks, it's not useful. Therefore, you should empty down your liquid level until, it, you, until it's at least at the 50 milliliter mark. And now, using a bent pipette, we are going to scoop up some of our liquid. Now comes the fun part. Using our bent pipette, we are going to insert a little bit of our liquid into the burette. Now you'll notice that the density of our liquid is lighter than that of water. So it will actually rise through the burette until it reaches the top. Once the liquid has floated to the top, it is now going to begin filling the small closed space with vapor. The liquid will evaporate until the closed space is saturated. The more liquid that evaporates, the more pressure that will be created, since we know that the total pressure is the sum of the vapor pressures via this equation. As our pressure increases, it will push our water column down to create more space for the gas to be in. We will only be able to record relative vapor pressures in this lab, so take note of how far your water column decreases. And from this information, we will be able to determine the relative order of vapor pressures. Now, if we heat our substance with our hands, how will temperature affect our pressure? Remember, PV equals NRT. Oh, and don't forget, since we will be using dangerous chemicals in lab, we will want to put them into this container. This container is labeled as the hazardous waste container, also just known as the hazardous waste container. Well, folks, that's all for today. And now, a chemistry joke. The other day I was hanging out with a neutron, and we both walked into a bar, and he says, bartender, how much for a drink? The bartender replies, For you, no charge.